with lesson 7.4 data analysis we're continuing with our our application of averages and during this this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to try to get you to understand when you would use one type of an average over another and remember there's three measures of central tendency three averages mean median and mode and those three have specific times when you should use it and times when you shouldn't use it so um, as a review before we get started I want you to do we're going to do a survey and let's do a small one. And normally in this in this uh, classroom, I would have said, okay, well, how many people live in your house? Um, and we would have set up the classroom, and I would have just gone through and counted it all up. But uh, because you're not available here right now, I'm the only one in the classroom, I'll just make up the information for you. So if I ask the students in the classroom, how many people live in your house? These are possible answers for you to have encountered. And it doesn't matter what ones you get. I'm going to put down the ones that I have because I've got my answers, my calculations all done so that it actually works out. There we go. So those are the answers for possible class. Okay, the three people live in the house here. It's two moms and a dad, or this could be the mom and dad and three kids. This could be a mom and two kids, whichever way you want to look at it. Okay, those are the number of people who live in the house, not including pets. So the first thing you know is how many kids do I have? If you look here, I've got 18 students that I have actually surveyed. So what is the mean of this data? Well, to calculate the mean, we know we take the sum over the number of entries. I'll help you out. Adding it all up is 79. There's 18 kids, which means that we have 4.38 repeating people. When you put them in order for the median, this is what it looks like. You have 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. I'm going to double check this to make sure I don't make a mistake here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5s. Five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5s. Five. 2, 6s. And a 7. Okay, now I haven't got commas in there. I guess I should put them in. All right, so there we go. If I did this correctly, you've got all those numbers there. And there's 18 of them. They're all in order. And the two middle numbers, well, there's basically 18, so it's 9 and 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, here's 9, and here is the other 9 over here. And, of course, being an even number, we have to find the average of 4 and 4, so the average of these two would be 4, so the median is 4. So the median is 4 people in the house. What's the mode? Well, you turn the page, the mode talks... And you can find that there's actually a tie here. There's a 3, a 4, and a 5. They're all the same. And what's the range? That's the smallest number and the largest number, the difference between them. Well, the biggest number was a 7. The smallest number was a 3, which means the range is 4. Okay? So, looking at that, this is the numbers that we got. The mean was 4.39, 4, and 3, 4, and 5. So the question now is, which one of these should you use as an average? So if someone asks you, what's the average number of kids in your class in their homes? Should you use 4.39, should you use 4, or should you use 3, 4, and 5? Well, first off, let's take a look at the mean. Can you have 4.39 kids? Now, I know the average-wise you could have it, but we're talking about where you should use mean and where you should not. In this situation, the mean has little meaning, and the re reason for that is because you cannot have you cannot have 4.39 in a family. It's got to be four, got to be three. You can't have 0.39 of a person. Let's take a look at the next step, the median. If you take a look at the median, the middle number is a 4. Okay. The median tells you the midpoint of all the people when they're, in, they're in, in an order. So if I was to draw the data, it would look like this. We have all the data, we have 4, and we have the other half of the data right there. Okay. The median being the midpoint, this is the one it is probably the most useful in this situation. Okay? So it's the midpoint of the data and should be used. Okay? 
Now, the mode. The mode is helpful because it shows that 3, 4, and 5 are the most common, and they're all the same. So this is useful because it shows that this is the most common size of family. So it does have use. Okay. So out of the three of these, this one should be rejected right out. Okay. Median and mode of them, this is probably the first one that you should look at. It has the highest priority, and this here can be helpful. All right. But not really that useful when you think about it. You can't tell somebody, well, what's the average number of uh, people in a house? Three, four, and five. That's not helpful really when you think about it. It's helpful in, to give you an idea of how things break down in the families in your classroom, but it's not that helpful. The average that's best is the four right here. Let's take a look at the next page. Bob's math class scores scored the following marks on a test. It's a small class because I don't want you to have to add up 20 numbers. If the, me, sorry, if the mode is an average, I want you to think about how it might be useful to show your parents the student who got 53 did very well. Okay? Remember, you're using the word average. So this is what I'm talking about. If you went home that day and you said to your parents, Mom, class average is 39%, and I managed to get 53. And you're talking about the mode as one of the averages. Your parents will probably think of the mean, but if you don't tell them that, you could use the mode and not lie. Now, I'm not suggesting you should do this, but it would not be a lie to say that I got 53%, but the class average was 39%. Now, is this a lie? No. The mode is an average. 39% is the mode. So, a student who wants to tell their parents they did well when they really didn't could use this statement. What about people who would want to know about the median? Right? Well, the median for, for a teacher is probably the most important because it divides your class in half. Okay? So, if I was um, looking at this, the, the median was 53% here. We take a look. They're already in order here for me, so you can see here that here and here is, is the breakdown. That tells me as a teacher that the halfway point is 53. Now, as a teacher, I'm looking at it and going, wow, that means half my class, it's a small class, but half my class got less than 53%. The other half got more than 53%. So to me as a teacher, that's very valuable. It tells me that I have a problem with this test or with the students. Now, it could be either one. If it's the test, then I change it and you get a retest, or we change the way things were, were taught uh, later on, or I may go back and reteach it. If it's because I have three students in my class who don't care and they just walked in and said, I don't care what I get, I'm just going to put my name on and hand it in, then I probably wouldn't worry about it too much. But as a teacher, the median is more important. The mean. This is what your parents want. The parents want the class average. Okay. And in this case, if you tell the parent the class average was 53% as a mean, then they're going to want to know, they're going to know what you got and how you compared it. Right? So you go back to the, sorry, did I see 53? Mean. Lost my numbers here for a second. Here we are. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, the mean. Let's see if I got that right. Okay. So parents wanted to know what the mean was. If the mean was 53%, they could tell and make a judgment call as to what you got and compare it to that. Okay. I'm just hesitating because I, up during all my notes here, I can't f find where I actually calculated whether the mean was 53% or not. So that's why I was hesitating. However, you could you could calculate that yourself by adding them all up and dividing by, by seven. 
Okay? But the parents want the mean. They want to know what the class average is mathematically so they can compare your number to it. So if your number was, if the class average is 53, they want to know what your, uh, your, uh, your mark was compared to that. So let's look at another situation here. This is a good example of, of the textbook where an average is useful. A clothing store sold jeans in these sizes in one day. To calculate the mean number of sizes, you can see that you add them all up and you get 522, you divide it by 17, which means that the mean size is 30.7. Now, we'll talk about whether that's useful in a moment. To calculate the median, you put them all in order, and the middle number is a, is a 30. And then if you calculate with the mode, it's a 28 and a 30. Okay? So looking at these three numbers, we have a mode right there, we have a median right here, and we have a mean which is right there. Which of these do you think is useful? Do you think the mean is useful? Do you think that a store buyer would actually be able to use that information in any way? Well, let's take a look. The only thing an average size tells you when you're doing clothing is the average waistline of the person who came through the door. That's all it tells you. It really has no effect on your sales at all. Okay, so it just tells the size of the buyer. And this is an average. It's not good for the store owner in any way. He can't use it to go and buy jeans in the future because you can't buy 30.7, so I guess it's 30.7. You can't go out to the store or, or order a 30.7 size waist jean. It just, you can't get them. You get them in 32s or 30s. Occasionally you can find them in half sizes, 31s, 33s, you know, they're odd numbers, but most of the time they're always in even size waistlines. Okay? What about the median? Well, the median tells the buyer where the middle point is, okay? So, for example, here's one set, and here it said it was a 30, and here's the other half of the data set. So what this tells the buyer, or sorry, the, the, uh, the person who runs the store, is that it, it's helpful in finding out where most of the sales are coming from in terms of, 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 a, of a middle point, and that's it. So. Um, it may be helpful in, so in advertising, so you may have someone go out and say, okay, look, we, we are midpoints 30, which means the majority of people coming in are midpoints 30 waste, so we're looking at probably, you know, teenagers for the most part, so maybe we could, be, could uh, advertise for that size of a person, and, you know, or maybe if you want to increase the other sizes, you could change your advertising to, to be a different size, you know, for say you wanted to sell more of them down in this area, you could target that for your sales. If you wanted to sell more in the upper sales or upper sizes, you could do that. So this is helpful in saying the average, you know, the, the, the middle point of it, okay? It could be used to stock your storerooms and stuff like that. Now the mode, this is the one that tells you the most, okay? This is the most valuable when you're in retail. It tells you that you sold a 28 and 30. These are the two sizes that you sold the most of. So when you're restocking, those are the ones you should be stocking the most. Okay? If you want to have different styles brought in as a, as a check to see if people would buy it, like maybe you want to change your brand of jeans or something, and you probably could bring in a bunch of 28s and 30s, because those are the ones you sell the most, bring them in with the different types of, of styles and see if they sell. And if they do, then maybe you can bring in more for the other sizes down here and above. Okay? So that, that's useful for the person. But the average jean size and the median are not really that helpful to a retailer. So whenever you encounter a question which has shoe sizes or jean sizes or shirt sizes or anything like that, where you cannot get a number between them right here, in most cases, you cannot use the mean or the median. The mode is most common. Okay, so let's average, let's put these all down so you can see where and when they should be used. Okay, so the mean is usually used best when no numbers in the data no numbers in the data are significantly are significantly different from the others.
test scores. Everybody is grouped together. That's a good average to use. Okay? Number of people coming through the door at a day during the day. Most days are going to be relatively similar, except for maybe your weekends. That's when you would use the mean. Okay? The median is usually used when there are numbers in the data. which are significantly different. Take a look at the two things I've just said. Okay, I think I forgot a word here. Okay, here no numbers are significantly different. Here there are numbers which are significantly different. Okay. And the mode is best used when the average of the data represents sizes of clothing. I think I spelled that wrong. Shouldn't have an H there. Clothes or shoes or stuff like that. This is where the numbers cannot be divided up into half parts. Okay? And we talked about that already. So these three pieces of information from this lesson, these are the two thing the three things that you should have memorized or know about because when I ask you, should you use the mean, should you use the median, should you use the mode, those are the things you're going to come back to and take a look at. Are the numbers significantly different? You should use the median. If they're not significantly different, then you should use the, the, the mean. If it's stuff like clothes and stuff like that, sizes of uh, things that you can't get halfway sizes or points or decimals, then you probably should be using the mode. Okay, if you have any questions, review. Hopefully I haven't made this difficult to follow. Okay, so check, your, check with me at lunchtime if you have any questions.